Hi, it's Tech Trek Tammy here with you today. I'm going to show you one of my very favorite parts of Google Drive, which is Google Forms. There are a couple of different ways you can access Google Forms. If you are in your Google Drive, you can click on New. Usually you have to scroll down to More and then click on Google Forms to bring up a blank form or a form from a template. If you click on from a template, this actually takes you to the template gallery for Google Forms, either within your organization or your personal um, account. We are just going to start with a blank form today. So I'm going to click on that. The very first thing that we have to do when we create a form is to give it a title. So we're going to click in the upper left hand corner. It's either going to say untitled form or blank quiz, depending on how you chose your um, form. I'm going to call mine practice 365 because I have no idea how many other practices I've created. And then I'm going to click down here in the form itself in the title area. And generally it brings that title down, but we're going to go ahead and type it in today. Practice 365. All right, so a few things across the top before we continue. The first thing that you're going to see is a puzzle piece. Now, you may not have that puzzle piece yet if you have not added any add-ons to your form. Um, it's actually add-ons, and you get add-ons from coming over here to click on add-ons. And add-ons are extra little helpers you can add to your form. So if I click on my add-ons, I have all questions required. Check it out choice eliminator and there are others that you can have as well the next one is the color palette this helps you change the background of your form keep in mind it only actually changes the top part so you can choose a solid color or you can choose right here in the images to choose um, an illustration or a photo and some of these actually have moving um, parts to them. Let me see if I can find one. There's one with a river. Well, anyway, you get the gist on that. So I'm going to choose the butterfly and hit select. Then I'm going to come back to my um, form and this little button right here that looks like an eyeball is the preview. What happens when you click the preview is that it opens to the front side or the side of the form that your students or your um, teachers will see when you send them this form. I'm going to close it now so that I don't get confused. This is the settings button on your form. From here, you can give, you can set some options. You can say to collect the email address of anyone who fills out the form. You can say um, that you want response receipts sent to those who fill out your form. You can restrict it to your G Suite domain. You can limit to one response, which actually I do that, especially if it's going to be a quiz or an assessment for my students. If it's not, and I need for my people to go back in and edit an answer after they submit, I can click on this one, edit after submit. I can also see a summary of charts and text responses. So I'm going to go ahead and click on limit to one response and hit save. Past the send button, there's going to be three dots that allow you to do different things with this form. You can copy this form in case you have it set up just like you want to and you just want to make a few changes, you could copy it. You can move it to the trash. You can get a pre-filled link. You can print. You can add collaborators. So let's say you have other teachers in your grade level that you want to help you fill out a, a creative form for your students or for parents. You can add collaborators. And then once again, here is where you can get the add-ons that I showed you up here. All right, so now we're ready for our form. The bar over here allows you to add questions. 
to add a title and a description, to add an image, a YouTube video, or another section to your form. Right now, this says practice 365. Now I can also put right here, um, I need you to fill this out ASAP. Or the reason why you're filling this out is because we need information back. Then I'm going to go to my first question and every question says untitled question. As soon as you click on it, you get choices over here to the right and underneath it. Generally, I put name as the first question, even though this is automatically collecting email addresses in my G Suite, um, I like to go ahead and put name. Sometimes the name on the email address is not the same as the name that a student goes by or a teacher goes by. So notice it automatically changed it to a short answer, which is great because you don't really want multiple choice for name, right? All right, so I'm going to make that required. And then I'm either going to copy the same format for this question or I'm going to add a question. Now on this question, I'm going to um, make it fairly simple because I'm in Texas. Um, I'm going to say who is the governor of Texas. And I'm going to click on my first option and I'm going to put... Um, Donald Duck. Oh, that, that wasn't good, was it? On Donald Duck, I'm going to put Greg Abbott. Are there days that you just cannot type? I'm going to put Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse. Obviously, this is going to be a really easy um, quiz. All right, so it's multiple choice. I'm going to add an image now. Now, when I click on add an image, I'm able to either upload an image from my machine, from my device. I can take a snapshot. I can put paste a URL address in. I can look through any of my albums. I can go to Google Drive or I can search. So I'm going to search either in Google, Life, or Stock Images, which allows you to put pictures in that are uh, Creative Commons so that they, they're not copyrighted. And um, I'm just going to search for penguins. Okay. Um, now, in my search, I'm going to choose a clip art penguin. And I'm going to choose this one and hit Select. Now, as it puts my image in, that's the only thing that's in this question. You can't ask a question unless you put one after it or before it. This is just an image. So I'm just going to give it the title Penguin. I can center, write a line. I can change the picture, remove it. I'm going to center mine. And then I'm going to add a question underneath that. And I'm going to say, please tell me what you think the penguin would say to you. Now, automatically it recognizes that as a paragraph. The difference between paragraph and short answer is you can make it as long as you want when it's in paragraph form. Okay? I'm going to click required because if I don't click required, they don't have to answer it. Next, I'm going to insert a YouTube video. Now, YouTube is a Google product. I'm going to search for penguins for a YouTube video. And there are tons of videos about penguins. Now, keep in mind that if you are going to assign this to your students, you would want to preview this first, but I'm going to assume this is safe. All about penguins for kids. I could preview it here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Again, I'm going to center that because I'm just kind of strange like that. And at the top, I'm going to say, um, please watch the entire video 
for a discussion we will have in class. All right, now at the bottom, I may want to add a discussion question and I may not, but I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to send this out, either if, I'm, if my students have an email, or I can grab the link and copy it, or I can add a shortened URL. Now, if you look at the shortened URL, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly have a specific meaning for that, but at least it's not a mile long like the other one was. And then I'm going to copy that. And what I can do now is either paste it on, into Google Classroom. I can send this directly to students or I can copy and paste it and put it in a presentation. These are just the basics of your form. Now, when they submit their form, so again, I'm going to preview. This is what our form looks like. Here's the form. This is what your students will see. And when they hit submit, then you're going to get responses. Now I'm going to go back to my the back end of my form, I'm going to go to responses. If I click on create spreadsheet, I'm going to create a new spreadsheet where the responses are going to go with the same name of the form. So I'm going to say create and it'll open up the spreadsheet. And here's where the answers that the kids submit will go. There's a timestamp for when they um, submit it, their email address, I actually have quizzes um, checked for this so that it can act, actually score it. And then here are the different questions. If I want to make sure that these wrap, I'm going to select the columns and I'm going to go up here and say format, text wrapping, and wrap so that I can see the whole question within that cell. Now I'm going to go back to my form and see these three little dots? There's more instructions right here. I can either get email notifications for new responses. Be careful with that because every time someone submits a response, you're going to get an email. Usually I only do this if it's something important that I need to see immediately. I've already selected the response destination. I can unlink the form if I've given a specific time limit on it and I reach that time limit, I can unlink it. I can download those responses or I can delete all the responses and start this over again at another time after maybe I need to edit it or something. All right, this is the basics of Google Form. I will do another video on advanced Google Forms and post it later. Happy forming!